Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Goodwin, and welcome to today's LinkedIn Live with Career Club. We have a really great episode today uh, that I'm very excited about. But before we start with all of that, um, I wanted to make sure that uh, tell you what Career Club does. We are helping people find careers that matter to them. And the way we're doing that is using proven sales and marketing techniques and tools to help folks find that career that they're really excited about. Uh, our guest today, Nathan Perez, is going to really riff on some important elements of that. So I'm very keen to, to get him on here in just a second. Um, please follow me and follow Career Club on LinkedIn. We are posting content every day that we hope you find valuable. Uh, you can also go to career.club and sign up for our newsletter to make sure you don't miss any of our events or posts. Um, for my HR friends out there, we recently launched Next Placement, which is Career Club's human-centric approach to outplacement. So if you find yourself in the unfortunate position that you've got to be letting some folks go during these tough economic times, uh, we would encourage you to reach out to us so that we can help you help the people that uh, are gonna be transitioning to new roles, as I said, in the most human-centric, empathetic way possible. So with that, I would like to go ahead and get our guest introduced here, Nathan Perez. Nathan, welcome. Hey, good to see you, Bob. I'm looking forward to our discussion. No, this is going to be great. So as is up on the screen, Nathan is the author of the 20-Minute Networking Meeting. I had some of the promotions that we did for this episode. I said, this guy literally wrote the book on networking, and that is a true statement. So again, Nathan, I'm very excited about our topic today, and uh, welcome. Oh, thanks very much for having me. Absolutely. Where are you calling in from today? Uh, I'm actually in northern Colorado. Oh, lucky duck. What's the weather like today? Uh, today, I think today actually may hit 70. But that doesn't mean like it's 70 right now, right? That means the warmest part of the day. And usually that's around uh, three o'clock. So we're and probably right in the 40s right and now. And you guys will probably get a blizzard tomorrow if I know uh, northern Colorado. Could happen. Yeah. And that'll be all gone an hour later. <laughs> yeah. And so, it's, by the way, so uh, I failed to mention this is an interactive live episode. So please feel free, one, to let us know where you're calling in from. And then secondly, if you've got any questions or comments for Nathan, please drop them in the comments section and you know, we'll get to as many of those as we can while still staying on track. So example, Susan or Sarah, rather, great to see you. Thanks so much. And yeah, you should be excited. Nathan is the man. So as is our tradition, Nathan, um, if you don't mind, we do just a few icebreaker questions. Okay. So starting with uh, born and raised, where'd you grow up? Uh, born and raised. Actually, I was born in northern Colorado. I actually moved away uh, between college and career and all those things. I was gone for almost 30 years until a couple of years ago. So uh, born and raised in northern Colorado and currently living in northern Colorado. Yeah, very cool. And we, I see my good friend Jesus Valdez is in Fort Collins. So, Hey, Jesus. We're in the hood together. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and then I see Charlie's calling in from uh, Hawthorne. Hey, Charlie, it's always good to see you. And Nicole who's one of our career coach friends, uh, who's great. We've got Gainesville, Virginia. Hi, Jerry. And Patricia Nunez from New York. This so this is cool. And thanks, everybody, for and, and keep letting us know where you're coming in from. There's somebody from Chicago. So secondly, um, where did you go to school? What's, what's your education background? Uh, I went to the University of Oklahoma. Awesome. And um, uh, I actually went there for uh, my theater arts degree. I have a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts theater. Well, we're going to talk about that in just a second. And uh, just a little bit about your family. Um, let's see. Uh, I have two sons, um, stepsons who are 17 and 19. And uh, just for fun, because of the region that I'm in, uh, literally like my location, I'm surrounded by hundreds of family members. I've got cousins that go back six generations in, in this region. So <laughs> there's That's a little cool. snapshot. And, and I think you've got a couple furry family members uh, down there with you as well, right? I do. I do. I've, there's one down here. She's the quietest. And then the other two, we want to keep them far away. They're, they're, think, they're full of noise. <laughs> that's best. So we've got uh, Kayla from Chicago, Jason from Cincinnati, Petrus from D.C., Go Sooner. See, that's one of the reasons we ask the icebreaker questions. As you know, in networking, find that human connection with folks is really, really important. And these are some of the questions that we teach people to ask just to start building a little bit of rapport. Now, you mentioned fine arts and theater. So yeah. tell us a little bit about your career because it's really interesting. Yeah. So um, should I just, just kind of give you some bits and pieces of it? Yeah, just a bit of the arc of, of your career, kind of where you started and where, you, where you're doing now. 
Right. Okay. So I mentioned that I have a BFA theater art. So before I got into anything that I'm doing these days, I actually spent 20 years in the entertainment industry as a professional actor and writer. This is after I got my, uh, my BFA. But in that time, um, as you may have heard, there are artists out there who have to have day jobs in order to fulfill mm -hmm. their artistic endeavors. And uh, over that, the course of those 20 years, I had almost 30 day jobs. Uh, so in the in the entertainment industry, I got to do film and television and radio commercials and all of those different things. And then um, I actually actually got started of all places with a temp job uh, on Wall Street at Goldman Sachs. I was the uh, executive assistant at first um, for general counsel, and then we got moved into the executive office where I was one of the EAs for the CEO, the CFO, the COO general counsel and so forth. Um, and I accidentally got involved in retained executive search um, way back, oh gosh, it was maybe around 2004, 2005. One firm later, um, I got into the research aspect. One firm after that, I, I uh, became vice president of research for another firm, which happened to be the firm that uh, my co-author had, and that's how we met. Very cool. So we've got a little bit of video lag here, so we'll do the best we can with that. Um, but but I, I love the fact that you, you've got your theater background and you're really learning some amazing communication skills and then how that bridged into executive search and, mm -hmm. and all those kinds of things and what ended up being your real expertise here. And then lastly, what do we find you doing when you're not uh, doing Nathan Perez stuff that's work related? What, what do you like to do? Uh, you know, when the weather's nice, actually, even when it's not nice, fishing. I like to go fly fishing. Uh, rules work a little bit differently in Colorado, which allows me access to the rivers most uh, pretty much all the year. But mostly I'm a really big reader, big writer. Mm -hmm. um, outside of these books, uh, my, my writing career started way back with plays and screenplays and so forth. So my work is actually kind of my hobby, right? Oh, or my cool. hobby is sort of my, my work, but really big reading, really big writing. Cool. All right. So I want to dive in. And again, you know, Dave Menifee, great to see you here and Renee and uh, everybody else. So thank you. Thank you again, everyone who's dedicated some time today. Um, so speaking of the book, and I love your book, um, what was what was sort of the impetus? Why, why did you guys originally decide that this book needed to be written? Right. So what actually happened is back, I had mentioned, uh, I met my co-author at her firm when I started working with them. Uh, and so way early on, um, uh, Marsha and I sat down and she knew that I had this writing background and she had a few different bucket list ideas for, for yeah. some books. Um, and she asked if I'd be interested in maybe collaborating on a project. So she pitched a few of the different ideas. And one of those ideas was networking. And I just jumped all over mm. it. Um, as I'd mentioned, you know, I spent 20 years in the entertainment industry as an actor and a writer. And that's uh, every day, every moment of your life really is all about networking. Um, and then uh, Marsha had all of her years in retained executive search as a networker. And the idea was that, you know, between the two of us, we could come up with something that would basically help or, or help anybody and touch basically any industry. Yep. No, th th that makes a lot of sense. And for those of you who haven't had a chance to read it yet, I mean, it is very readable. This is not an academic tome. The, the, the tone of the book is written very conversationally. It's very accessible, but at the same time, extremely practical. And we're going to get into some of those practicalities in a minute. Um, how do you know which book to buy? There are different versions. Which uh, You want to cover that real quick, Nathan? Yeah. So so if I were just to basically like put in a single sentence, who is the book targeted to? It's literally targeted to anybody or anybody who built, needs to build relationships or meet people, right? Or to network. And, and as I, I said a second ago, that's pretty much all of us, like in uh, all the time. Um, these particular books are sort of written in context for job search or career development. But mm -hmm. since networking is essentially all the same, right? It's used no yeah. matter what. Uh, um, it, they're also used for sales and business development. However, there are four editions. Um, uh, to get really specific, the very first one was the executive edition. And this year we passed the 10 year anniversary yay, of the executive edition. And since that time, over a course of about seven years, um, uh, I wrote three more in context for. So there's the executive edition. Uh, there's one for graduates or anybody who goes back for their MBA. There's one mm -hmm. for veterans. And then there's one for everybody else. And that one's called the, the professional edition. Um, yeah. They're all pretty much the same thing. All the examples and all that stuff are in the uh, same place, but it's just written in context 
Uh, so it's a little more familiar with your world, right? Your lingo and your terminology, the vernacular. Yeah. No, I, you know, and, and having worked both with you know, recent graduates as well as veterans, there are nuances there for sure. And I think putting it in that context is super helpful. Hmm. Um, so this might be kind of an odd way to, to get started, but you know, what are some misconceptions about networking? I know that when we work with our clients, some people think it's really icky, it's salesy. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I'm using people, you know, I'm embarrassed to, to network with people, whatever it might be. Well, I, and I know you've got some in the book, but what are some of the major misconceptions that you've observed that people have about networking? Oh, gosh, so many of them. On top of those, I'm wasting my time. Network is just schmoozing. The longer the meeting, the better. You know, the, the more I give them out my background, there are all these different things. I think in a nutshell, um, it's what it really is. Right. People think that it's supposed to be this or it's supposed to be that. And then you hear from someone else that it's a little different than this and that. And the next thing you know, no one really knows what it is. So it's about really what it is. And um, what I would like to do is actually let's 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 simplify this further. Right. In fact, I think we could even say let's just redefine what this networking thing is altogether. Please. All right. So. Here's the thing. There are many different purposes or many different outcomes when it comes to networking, right? But in a single word, really what it's about is just the information or the exchange of information, right? The obtainment or the exchange, and they're the same thing, okay? The obtainment or the exchange of information. So networking is not, you know, about being, hey, all slick and smooth or dropping names or being salesy, working rooms, all those things. Mm -hmm. We're so worried about what to say. Uh, what do we do? Am I doing it right? Am I wearing the right thing? No, it's just a discussion, right? Because a discussion is all about the information, the obtainment and the exchange of information. So if you think about it, if you can just think about it um, as being the gathering information, then you realize you're doing this all the time. OK, you're networking all the time. The difference between just like, you know, networking and having discussion and having a successful networking meeting or a successful discussion is what you do with that information. You know, yeah. just, I mean, gathering is great because, you know, you kind of gather a foundation. Maybe we'll go there in a little bit. But then mm -hmm. from there, do you act on it? Do you follow up on it? Do you call someone else and do you get further information? So it's just about the obtainment of information. Well, so so what I love about, first of all, thank you for kind of giving us a, a very workable definition of what networking is. And I think that already what I take from that is, well, to your point, we do this all the time. That's called a conversation, right? right. You, know, you do, you, you, then you're networking with your significant other, you're networking with your neighbor, like we're all the time exchanging the time. information in a meaningful way, right? And what, what I love about what you're going to be sharing here in a few minutes is some structure to, to help people do that in the most efficient way possible that yeah. makes good use of everybody's time. Because as you said, you know, one of the misconceptions is the longer the meeting, the better. Right. And, you know, I know that one of the points that you make is that's actually becomes an obstacle for people taking networking meetings right. is, OMG, I don't have an hour for this. Right. Hence the 20 minute networking meeting, right? <laughs> yeah. The truth, the truth of the matter is, is that no matter what you would discuss over the course of an hour, you can discuss within, you know, inside of 20 minutes, especially if mm -hmm. you're focused on it and you have an agenda. One of the uh, misconceptions of networking out there is, hey, you just meet up with someone and you have a conversation and hopefully you'll get something out of that, right? And of course, the longer that conversation can go, uh, the better that meeting is probably going to feel when I'm done, when it's just not the truth. Because then you end up with a meeting that doesn't have any focus, doesn't have um, uh, a particular place that you want to go. And your networking contact the entire time is trying to understand what this discussion is supposed to be about. Yeah. And all of a sudden you have a time suck and your meeting is over and you feel like you walked away with nothing. And your and your contact can end up feeling kind of defeated, too, because they can feel like uh, I didn't end up helping this person in the end. Mm -hmm. No, it, I think that's spot on. Now, one of the things that... Um, we talk to our clients about, and I'd rather hear it in your words. Uh, and I know that, that you you touch no, you more than touch on this. You really you really help people understand this better. Is before you network, the importance of having your attitude in a good place and having your message be clear. Could you could you talk about those for a minute? Yeah, if you are not ready to go out there and uh, network, like if you don't have a, a ready 
state of mind, uh, then you're not you're not ready to go out and meet new people and try and gather this information. People can tell. You can yeah. sense it. If you've ever sat across from someone who's been in a bad mood or is stressed out, you just can't help but see it. And that can really um, get in the way of your networking meetings because that's the impression that you leave right. with people, right? So you have to be in a really good uh, mental state. Now, let's just say that you're solid on that. You're cool with having just lost your job or being downsized or maybe, you know, whatever. Um, now you got to figure out, like, what is it you want to do next? Right. What do you want to do? And um, most of the clients that I work with will tell me, you know, they're they're 50 and up and they'll say, I don't I don't know what I want to do when I grow up um, because their time has been so focused on what they have been doing. So you have to figure out like what your next step is. Do you want to stay in the same kind of role? Do you want to stay in the same industry? Are you looking to do some something completely different? Deciding where you're going to go um, and what you want to do is what's going to decide who you're going to talk to first and then next and so forth and, and, and so on going on. Yeah, so we talk about airing bad commercials and I, I liken it to buying a Super Bowl commercial. So we, yeah. we have a 30 second spot on the Super Bowl, um, but the, the ad's terrible. It's a really oh. bad spot. And so it's like, I met a bunch of people, like I've been networking like crazy. Yeah, but like your message is not good. Like, right. well, what do you want to do, Nathan? I don't know, you know, that's a really a good question. It's like, well, like, I don't know how to help you when you don't know where you want to go. Right. And, right. and that's what we see a lot of times. Now, that in some cases in like an informational interview, if, if it's positioned as a discovery kind of a call, and the reason I'm reaching out to you is to get some advice as I reconsider what I might want to do, as you said, when I grow up. But for people that like, no, I know what I want to do. I'm just networking. And, and you can't give clear direction to the person that you're talking to. It's a waste of time. And I want to go back. I want to go back to the the attitude piece because people really do struggle. You know, if you've lost your job, between fear, confusion, anger, shame, which seem to be like the four dominant emotions that people experience. Right. Um, again, not good to be out in front of people because you're not the best representation of yourself. Right. And you don't have to maybe even get all the way to happy if you can just get to kind of neutral, and you know. It'd be sort of healthy, a healthy version yeah. of yourself. It's really, really important because what we've seen too many times is people really like, I, I need to get busy. Like I need to be doing something because like my severance runs out at the end of uh, December. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're busy, but now you've burned up a bunch of contacts. Right. It's very hard to get back in front of because then we already meet and oh, by the way, it wasn't great. Yeah. And I'm not really sure I want to give you another 45 or 60 minutes of my time if it's going to be a replay. Right. Or introduce you to people that uh, may be important to me. Right. You seem down and not confident. Uh, I can't send you to a contact that's important to me that could reflect poorly on me. Yeah. And, and, and we're, we're going to we'll get into that in a minute, because for me, part of that is gaining an evangelist, which I know that we'll talk about mm. in a second. So. Um, uh maybe what we could jump into is the framework that, that you put sure. forward in the book, starting maybe with the objective and strategy of, of a networking meeting. And then I'll just let you run with that. Okay, sure. Okay. Let's just say that you have your objective uh, down, right? You know what you want to do. And then you're going to reach out to someone and ask for a meeting. And we can talk about how the outreach and so forth. But this is how you would run the meeting, a proper uh, job search or career development meeting. There are five steps to it, the 20 minute networking meeting, and they go like this. There's the great first impression. Okay, that's about two to three minutes. Then there's the great overview. This is a snapshot of your professional background. Sometimes it's called a value proposition, uh, 60 second snapshot, 30 second snapshot, 60 second commercial pitch, elevator pitch. It's all the same thing, okay? And in our case, what we're talking about is 60 seconds or less. And we can get into details in a second. So um, great first impression, great overview, then the great discussion step. That's step number three. That's the bulk of your meeting. It's about 12 to 15 minutes long, okay? And then you've got the great ending, which is very simple. You just kind of sum everything up. That takes about two to three minutes. That's it. And then following up afterward. 
Mm. That's it, the five steps. But but between those um, five steps, any meeting can absolutely happen inside of uh, 20 minutes. Now, having said that, I do want to say that if anybody is contemplating reading this book, you understand, uh, Bob, you said it a little earlier, it's not like a bag of tricks or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, it is specifically for uh, job search and career development, though you can extrapolate and pull the meaning out of that and use it for, for anything. But those are the five steps. Hmm. Do, do you mind just because we are going to drill into those, the, the, what I gleaned in the kind of the objective and the strategy for any networking meeting in terms of kind of giving and getting information, you know, getting more contacts and hopefully gaining an evangelist. Could you talk about how people should be thinking about those three things? Sure. Uh, will, you, will, you, will you say them for me again, Bob? The, the, the getting information, uh, gaining new contacts and hopefully gaining an evangelist. Um, right. Okay. So let me, let me start with the end first, and you may have to remind me again. Gaining an evangelist, this is a really big one, um, and I think it's really important. The way that you actually gain an evangelist is by running a sharp, crisp meeting, which, by mm -hmm. the way, has a good dose of reciprocity, but we'll, we'll kind of get that uh, when we can. So, um, when you run a really solid meeting like that, and it's informed by the research that you've done on that person, on their career, and that comes out in the form of the questions that you ask them, then what ends up happening, especially by the time you reach the end of a meeting, which is followed with the, the question, how can I help you? People now understand that you can run a crisp, tight meeting, 20 minutes, have, have it be very, very informative. It's very clear that you've done the research on them and everything else. You walk it out, out of that meeting and a person is left impressed. And by the way, you did say, hey, thank you so much. How can I help you, by the way? And again, yes. you know, we'll come back to that. But what happens is you leave that kind of impression with someone and it makes an evangelist. When we leave a solid impression on someone, there's sort of the secondary thing that happens, which is people remember you fondly as someone who is thoughtful, as someone who can run a, a meeting. And when people remember you fondly, uh, they tend to think of you first professionally. Hey, mm -hmm. Bob, I'm looking for a marketing person in the CPG space. Um, can you think of anyone? And you're like, I just met with a CPG yes. person and she was really great, really sweet. She was really on top of it. Yes, Nathan, I do know of someone. Mm -hmm. So that that part is really important. Now that was the, the end part. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, will you repeat the other two for me? It's getting information and getting contacts. Getting information and contacts. So the information you're getting uh, through your um, through your meeting, right? But you will have done your research. I cannot emphasize it enough. You have to do research on people because you couldn't reach out to somebody and ask them for help, believing they could help you if you've done no research on them, right? right? So when you've done the research and you understand their background or maybe their experience, then you can develop uh, questions that you want to ask them when you actually sit down with them. That is how you gather it. You kind of want to be, um, you have an opportunity here to gain the unique uh, wisdom or knowledge that mm -hmm. maybe just these person, these people can give you, right? So that's how you get, gain the, the specific information. Now, having said that, there is such thing as asking a single question of multiple people for multiple perspectives on a single thing that is important to you. But again, it's a unique opportunity for you to gain information that you really couldn't otherwise get by reading blogs or listening to podcasts or reading articles. Mm -hmm. So that's the information gathering. Um, the networking names. Now, there's a huge fear around asking people for more people to go and network with, right? But here's the thing, especially if you run a tight meeting, and they understand you, you know how to run that meeting, you are much more likely to be introduced when you ask, right? Bob, is there someone else in the CPG space that could answer the same three questions that I just asked you? Mm -hmm. That's it. I've just now asked for more. <clears throat> um, but when you get to that part in the meeting, it's very easy to ask because it just makes a lot of sense that at that point in the meeting, you would ask that question. And in networking meetings, people usually expect to be asked this particular question. Yeah. And with a tight meeting, the way that we're kind of talking about it here, um, people tend to go for it. They, yeah. they, 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 know what to, they know what to expect from you and, and to give to their context. So, so one of the things that you know, I think is just so important is, you know, and this is part of gaining an evangelist, but the other things that you said in terms of the preparation, running a tight meeting, things like that, sometimes people come into networking meetings too casual. 
like, well, this isn't an interview. Like I'm just meeting Nathan. And so, you know, like I didn't shave today. I didn't, you know, try very hard. Right. Because it's, well, it's just a networking meeting. Like Nathan's not going to hire me. So like, but what people fail to understand is in that that's such a great word that you use as an evangelist, an advocate, somebody that's going to put their brand on you. Yeah. And so, but if you've impressed them, then like they're going to be much more inclined to want to do that. But the person that comes into it, low energy, didn't do any prep, is kind of just sort of going through the motions. It's like, am I really going to introduce them to the best people right. in my network or the most relevant people in my network? No, because right. I'm going to get a phone call, Bob, why did you bring that guy to me? Like, seriously, what was that about? And I've taken that phone call before and yeah. it's not one I ever want to take again. And so, <laughs> right. but, 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 but it is really important. That, and I just want to emphasize for viewers and listeners is go into a networking call. Like it's an interview. It has the same weight. So that's one. Two is to your point about getting contacts. It should actually feel very natural at some point. And um, the, the, the notion that, hey, the people that I'm already connected with or know is where I'm likely to get my job. Because we all have heard, you know, 70 to 80 percent of jobs are found, you know, in the hidden job market or come through networking or however you want to say it. But the reality is, even if that's true, it's probably not going to come through your first degree connections. And it's probably not even to come through your second degree connections. Right. It's that third ring out right. is where the magic happens. LinkedIn just published some, some study, uh, I think just last month, where they were updating something literally from the 1970s, talking about weak connections. Mm. And you have to kind of get several degrees out because that's mm -hmm. where the magic is. And right. people that think this is very one for one, you know, I'm going to call these XT people and they're, somebody's going to have a job for me is probably not realistic. Right. Does, does that line up with your experience, Nathan? Absolutely. Third ring out is really, really important. Um, it can seem like that's a long way out sometimes, too, when we think about just our first ring of people. But just imagine that you meet someone through a friend, right? Now you've got, now you're two rings out. But if you stay in touch with them and you kind of develop that relationship over the time, over time, they're no longer a second ring. They become a first ring, which brings the third ring in one ring closer, right? And so forth and so on. Our network is, is um, we have a huge network because it's comprised of the people that we know, right? And through a single person, you can meet multiple people, dozens and dozens of people. So your network rings are as big as your, your contacts network rings go out, right? But again, yes. you reach out, you establish a relationship, and you bring everyone right home. So for some people, um, everything you said is absolutely right. Um, it can seem like it's, it's limited. For someone like me, many years later in many different industries and so forth, because I have kept in touch with people, well, now I can make a single phone call or maybe one to two phone calls and really get what I'm after, any information information of those kinds of things. It's about making that effort and understanding, right? It's it's not immediate. It's not immediate gratification. This happens yes. over the course of time. Yes, yes, yes. And, and one of the points that you make that I think is really so spot on is networking actually is a long game. And right. you know, it's a lifetime adventure. And you know, when we, the, the, the analogy that I use sometimes is an ATM. And if I haven't been making deposits in the ATM, the day that I really need to go pull a hundred dollars out, but I haven't been making deposits. <laughs> right. That's a, that's a problem. It's a problem. And, and so we need to constantly be making deposits. So to that, because I don't want to lose this thought, and, and you'll probably we're going to get to it anyway. But the thing that I think made me fall in love with the book the most was talking about what what I think is just the absolute gold in networking is going into these meetings with an attitude of how can I help the other person? Yeah. Right. So that I'm not a net taker that like, this is two adults who both have something to offer. Right. And, but, but going into it with this attitude of reciprocity and, and not even bartering, but like I genuinely just want to help. No, and if I can help you and you know, how can I help? Can you build on that thought for a minute? Yeah. Um, you know, we can't get anywhere without um, help. Uh, and it's great that we can ask for and we accept help ourselves, but we don't really understand the power of what it is to help someone else. Yes. Right. 
first and foremost, it's a very deep spiritual thing. There is a reward there that feels so good that will it will ask you to continue to do it, help and help and help without any expectation. And the lovely thing about that is that it's not lost on people. I mean, it, it may be some here and there, but most people end up going, you what? what well, you, this has made a huge difference to me. Like, you know, what can I do in return for you? And it really evokes that same emotion, that sensibility in other people to do it. Um, helping is really, really, uh, I think, key to your overall uh, successful networking um, because it's the, um, the impression that you leave with other people, what kind of professional you are. Yes. I, I think, too, it, it helps people get over the, um, the ickiness of networking or That's even true. the shame of networking of like, I need something alms for the poor, alms for the poor. And it's like, no, we're two adults. I've got assets and things and relationships and knowledge like right. that I can share as well. And I, I want to share those with you, you know, as the opportunity presents itself. Well, now they kind of come in like, well, I've got something to offer too, and I can hold my head high. And, and so I think that again, back to attitude, it's like that is so foundational to be successful at networking. Yes, absolutely. I think um, when it comes to people feeling like, what do I have to offer? You just touched on this. Uh, you know, we're, we're a walking data bank of experiences and knowledge and wisdom. And the thing is, is that all of that is applicable to everyday life and the people that we meet. So let's just take, for instance, that you're working in a job, you do your job and you do the stuff that you do. You can feel, you feel like you have value add to the organization and whatever it is that you do. Well, it's not like it, that's the only case, right? Because everything that you are, that you've learned, everything that you do is actually being applied somehow or another to what you currently do. Take away the fact that you have that job and you're still that same person with all of those offerings. And when you get into a discussion, most of us, especially if it's in our wheelhouse, we like to discuss and get into details about how this works or why we did this or that and the other, right? Because it's our own experience. And that is the value. That's when the other person is sitting across from you, drinking it all in and going, I didn't think about this. I didn't think about that. When in your everyday personal life or your professional life, like you don't think about it because it's your everyday personal life or professional yeah. life. So we constantly have something. Um, it could be hobbies. It could be professional, but we always have something to offer. Well, and so that's why we like to, to encourage people to ask some of those icebreaker questions. Uh, you know, for, like, you know, uh, to, I'd love to learn just a little bit about your family. Well, you know, you've got two kids. Uh, you know, one of our daughters is dyslexic. Another, but whoa, me too. Like, do you actually know this resource? So right. the way that we teach people how to ask the question is, you know, I would just love to be able, or even a statement, I'd love to find a way to be of help to you personally or professionally. Yes. And again, I really like this per. I mean, like these, all these things, it's kind of this recursive thing that they all kind of reinforce each other. For right. sure. Yeah. So I want to uh, be mindful of the time since we, you know, we've already blown through our 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> let's, let's go back, please, to kind of the five steps. Yep. And then if you can just sort of because I really want to make sure that, OK, I've got my attitude in a good place. I'm going in with the, with the, the mindset of trying to help. I know my message. Now I want to run this really tight meeting. So can we kind of go through each of the five steps, you know, to sure. help folks get that yeah. down? Okay. So uh, let's just say I show up at your office, right, Bob? Um, you and I have already agreed on, on our meeting and I show up and we shake hands. You say, hey, you know, come on in, have a seat. And you go sit down too. And uh, so now we're at the, the great first impression stage. And that right there going in is part of it. Firm handshake, eye contact, warm smile. Nice to see you too. On the way in, maybe we're chit chatting a little bit about uh, what's in the hallway or what's hanging on the wall. Maybe it's some weather. It's just that little bit of chit chat, right? Now we're seated and we're we're ready to begin actually having the discussion. Um, and then we get into what would be the great overview. So Bob, thanks so much for taking the time to meet with me. I really appreciate it. If you don't mind, I'd like to give you just a 60 second snapshot of my background, just to provide a little context for the discussion. And you say, sure, Nathan. So I kind of give you this, that, and the other. Now, just a tip for you guys that are listening to this and watching this. If you've ever heard that you have to tailor your resume for very specific things that you might apply for, mm -hmm. well, you also kind of want to tailor a little bit of that snapshot you're going to give to according to the person that you are uh, speaking with, because you're trying to give them specific context that is going to set up your specific questions 
in the great discussion step. So now I've just given you the 60 second snapshot and now we're gonna slide into, okay, and that just takes like 60 seconds, right? And then we go into the great discussion step. Now this is um, the great discussion step uh, is comprised of five key questions. Okay, there's the first three, I'll talk about those and then the fourth and the fifth. The first three, and I had mentioned this earlier, is specifically designed for your contact. You're hoping to gain that, that sort of wisdom or knowledge that maybe only they could give you, okay? And you develop three of those and they could be anything. How do you figure out what you wanna ask? Well, have you ever been reading something? Um, maybe you saw something and in your mind you went, hmm, that is the question. That is the <laughs> unasked question. Hmm. And if we pay attention, close attention to ourselves, you will suddenly have a question, okay? Mm -hmm. So you wanna develop three of those. Now the fourth question, uh, and this is typically where networking breaks down for people. The fourth question is asking for more names. Hey, Bob, thank you so much. I've just learned so much about consumer packaged goods. Um, uh, I greatly appreciate it. And, and the information you just gave me, can you think of anybody else that I could have the same discussion with? Could you think of anybody else that I could ask the same three questions? Can you think of anybody else who's in the consumer packaged goods space, but in this area, it just mm -hmm. has to be specific. Okay, so now you've asked for the name. Um, and then the, uh, the fifth question, the fifth key question is, da -da -da, how can I help you? This is key and it's a game changer for most people because you know business tends to be a little bit transactional, right? Uh, I've got something you want, you got something I want, maybe that involves money and then off we go. But when you ask the question, how can I help you for the help that you've just been given, that you've just given me, people, it catches people by surprise oftentimes, mm -hmm. right? Um, but you'll be prepared because you've done your research, you'll, you'll be able to offer something. Um, but it changes everything because now we're just two people talking, you know, levels and experience levels, all that stuff goes out. It's just that, thank you so much for helping me. Can you think of any way I can help you? Um, a tip for you uh, really quick. If you if, if, if that person is surprised, you will have done your research, right? And you've mm -hmm. maybe gone through their interests or their skills, and you maybe can think of a, a publication or you can think of a certain thing that you can go. And that person says, you know, you say to me, Nathan, I'm, I'm not really sure. I said, no problem. Uh, so I was looking at your, your LinkedIn, Bob, and I know that you're interested in fly fishing as well. And here's a list of streams. Or let me know if you, know, you know, want to go skiing. I, I have some places, okay? So then that's the fifth question. Um, and then, so that's a great discussion. So we've got the great first impression, your overview, the discussion, and then the ending. Okay, not to your overall networking, to the meeting. And it's mm -hmm. simple. You just review what you've agreed upon between the two of you. Uh, thank you so much for introducing me to John. And then I'll send you an invitation to the next roundtable, Bob. Thank you. Right. Uh, and then if you're in person, firm handshake. Here we are. Right. We're full circle, firm handshake, eye contact, warm smile. And then you're out of there. No long goodbyes. Right. You just that's mm -hmm. it. If you're on video, you can just wave like this still the warm smile, eye contact, as it were, mm -hmm. and then you click off. That's it. You're out of there. Uh, and then the last step is follow up. Um, right. In this case, right after your meeting, you, the quicker you can follow up, the better. Um, don't go beyond 24 hours if you can help it. If, if you can really cannot help it, don't go beyond 48 because you mm -hmm. really risk your, your contact um, feeling like they're an afterthought. Right. And they said yes to help you in the first place. So you don't want to go really far. So within 24 hours is great. That's the first follow up. But then because there's two kinds of follow up here, immediate and then ongoing. Ongoing is following up over the course of time to keep your network alive. How do you do that? How often do you stay in touch? About once a quarter. Just about once a quarter. And that's it. Stay relevant to the discussions that you've already had. You'll be able to remember those because you took notes. Right. Um, yep. And then you hark back to those notes and you just keep in touch over the course of time. Well, so you said so many great things just on the the last magical question, not to be the dead horse. But to your point, you said something like they'll be like, wow, really caught off guard a little bit, you know, by how can I help you? And mm -hmm. it truly is a differentiated behavior. Very, very few people come in and actually will ask that. So for people listening, it is a highly differentiated 
behavior. Don't even be surprised if when you ask for a contact, well, I'm not sure right now, but let me think about it. That's cool. No problem, Nathan. But but also, what else? I would love to find a way that I could be of help to you. you know, does anything come to mind? Mm, no. Hey, I just thought of Jerry. You need to talk with Jerry. Like, it works this way. It it's, does. I mean, it, people are emotional. And when you start to resonate with people emotionally, like yes. that's that's how it works. Um, something else. This is so silly, but but I've seen this too many times. Is people not bringing something to write with to a meeting? And it's yeah. like heaven forbid I say something interesting. I have a contact and a phone number with like bring something to write on. Now, one thing that you did not say. Um, that I can imagine somebody might be asking is, should I bring my resume, Nathan? Should I hand that to them during my kind of overview? Uh, sure, you can bring it uh, and you can offer it. You can offer it before, you can offer it later. Um, you know, um, so Bob, I'm about to give you like a 60 second snapshot. Would it be useful for you to have my resume in hand as I do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, sure. Or no, that's that's OK. Um, if it's no and then you get to the end of the meeting, now they have a snapshot of your background anyway. Right. Because you've given it. And if you've run a really, really great meeting, um, then you can offer it one more time and say, um, I can leave one behind for you if this would be useful at all. Uh, and usually most people will say yes, because even if they don't want it, they'll do something with it. But um, but being able to leave it behind um, is is a really good idea. But you can offer it. Any, any of those times. Be okay yep. with it if they say, no, I don't need that. I already looked at your LinkedIn, for instance. That's mm -hmm. okay. You know, one of the things too that kind of occurs to me, and, and you, you're even doing this in our conversation where you, you have referenced consumer packaged goods, CPG, a couple of times, because that's in context for me. So like, I, I love it. You're, you're a master at this. <laughs> but one of the things as we think about like nurturing our network is as you're networking and you continue to meet new people, you can go back to a yeah. meeting maybe that you had six months ago with Susan. And now you just met this amazing person that you know would be super helpful to her. Like right. that really becomes magic, networking magic. Um, yeah. you're, ge you're genuinely following up with value and, and not just, hey, checking in kind of stuff, but like, Hey, I just met this lady. I think that you guys would get on really well. She's an expert in packaging. That was something you had expressed some interest in. I would love to get you guys connected. Absolutely. So yeah, so I'm, I'm almost going to repeat everything you just said. So imagine that you and I, we had that wonderful meeting. Uh, it was so great. And you gave me these three answers around CPG stuff. And then I came back to you a couple months later and say, hey, Bob, it's been a little while since we talked. Listen, you remember the discussion we had about X, Y, and Z and those three things? I happen to have another discussion about those same three things. And she told me this, that, and the other. If you've got some time over the next couple of weeks, um, I'll buy you a copy. We'll have a discussion. I would also like to connect you with that person. Right. It's almost a guaranteed yes that we would have this meeting again because it's going to expand more on what you and I already discussed. You're going to get something out of it as well, uh, not to mention a cup of coffee, right? Um, and you and what happens uh, more importantly, foundationally, is that we begin to build a relationship between you and I. Yes. And and that and that's what I think is maybe like one of the overarching notions here is we're really building relationships. Oh, that's at the people. heart of all of it. Yeah. Yeah, and and that you can't microwave these things. Like this is the <laughs> long game, well, right? I mean, you know, yeah. and and yet, unfortunately, sometimes people and this is like one of the the misconceptions that I think you're really helping people kind of, you know, understand is this is the long game. You know, if you are genuine about investing in relationships, this will be the greatest asset that you ever have. It, Absolutely, like, hands down. You know, you will never be in job search for a long time because you, know, you have made those deposits in the bank. Yeah. And, and people want to help. I think that's something else that is really important to understand is if you can conduct a meeting, do your research, not waste people's time, but be valuable, bring value, be courteous, be gracious, follow up, do all the things that you're saying. People want to be around people like that. It, it's a pleasure. It, it's, it's energy giving, not energy yes. taking to right. be around people like that. And right. you're not just sort of sucking hours out of their day. You're actually making their day better. Right. Exactly. You know, you mentioned deposit a couple of times and, and I, I, I want to, make a point here. People ask me a lot, when am I supposed to start networking? 
Uh, and the answer, the short answer is right now, right now. Um, I work with a lot of senior uh, executives who who suddenly lose their job, mm. right, out of nowhere. And the thing is, you guys, you have to remember that it's like a four, five, six month ramp up when you begin the networking process. Another way to look at that is like that's a four, five, six month delay on getting your next job if you are not um, prepared for it. Right. So yeah. even now, if you have a job and you're developing your career, go have coffee with people get into discussion, engage in things that are within the industry and more that you can learn, learn about everything uh, that is going on. Um, especially if you're in a position where you know that your position is going to end, maybe you're leaving, mm -hmm. maybe they're going to ask you to leave, whatever it may be, but you'll already have the relationships, those deposits, right, in place uh, as you go down the road for anything that would ever happen. By the way, it's not just about, again, career development or job search. This could be sales. This could be uh, business development. It could be on the personal side. I just recently had to get a new set of tires and I went to a few different people to go, where am I going? Where do I go get tires where it's going to be affordable and all these different things, right? So um, thinking about ahead of time uh, is to, to deposit all of that. I don't know what would be a good expression for it. Um, um, relationship value <laughs> uh, uh, for you to be able to have successful networking whenever you need it. That's right. That's right. And, you know, the, the, we actually wrote a post today on, <clears throat> you know, Hey Bob, should I wait until after the holidays? Cause I know like people are getting really busy and my answer is like, Nope. nope. Like time is not your friend. Like the, the answer is always today. And, you know, the, 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 uh, the famous line is, you know, the best time to have planted a tree was 10 years ago. The next <laughs> best time is today. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, so it's just sort of the nature of the beast. We've covered a lot, Nathan. And, you know, I told you kind of before we went on that I could do this for three hours with you, like no three problem. Hours, easy. You're, you're so good at this, but is there anything that we either haven't talked about that you think would be really important to make sure that we don't overlook or just anything that you would want to re-emphasize as kind of a parting thought? Thanks. Yeah, I think it's actually re-emphasis. Um, and again, to simplify this networking thing. Look, here's the, here's the thing, you guys. We didn't talk about um, this, but I really want to mention it. I, I am, by definition, an introvert. Right. And there's those of us out there who are like, yeah, I'm really reluctant to go out into groups or I don't want to do this and so forth. Guys, it's just discussion. That's all it is. Um, through this discussion right now, you've gained and you've picked up all of this kind of information and you will take it elsewhere. OK, we've kind of done it. If anybody were to reach out to me, we could pick up where, where Bob and I've just left off. Right. It's just uh, the information. And um Guys, networking couldn't be easier than it is right now in terms of the convenience. Um, yeah. With this whole pandemic thing that had happened, it forced us all to learn how to use the technology, right? Yeah. Even grandma and grandpa. So we're all kind of caught up. And the great thing is, is that while we might be spread across the state or the country or even the world, we can do this. We can hop on at any time of the day or night. So it's easy to schedule. It's very convenient. We don't have to worry about commutes and so forth. So it's really easy to actually connect with people and do the networking thing. But if you just keep in mind that every discussion you ever have is just um, pay attention to it when you're in the moment. What am I learning? What am I learning? What have I just given? Mm -hmm. What have I just given? And you'll realize that you've got so much information all the time and you never even really had to sit down. Or had, make, or had to make something formal of it in the way we discussed it today. So guys, even your conversations and discussions is networking. Okay. Awesome. Well, I, I, I don't know how to end better than that. If people wanted to learn more or connect with you, Nathan, what's the best way to do that? Uh, you can reach me on my website. That's NathanAPerez.com. NathanAPerez.com. Look at that. It just popped up there at the bottom. You can also find me on LinkedIn. Same thing, Nathan A. Perez. Um, yep, those are, those are probably two best ways. Cool. Well, I've enjoyed this so much. I, I have admired you from a distance, and it's so great to spend more time with you. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. You've demystified and simplified something that I know you know, really confounds people. And just reducing it down to it's just exchanging information. It's just a conversation. We all know how to do that. Yeah. But doing it in a structured way that creates the right impression and that yields a result is you know, just gold. So I really, really do appreciate it. It's great seeing you. And thanks so much. Thanks, everybody who uh, dialed in. Um, you can also download this as a podcast if you want to listen to this again. But in the meantime, hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your week. And again, Nathan, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you too, Bob. Have a good day.